Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 13. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Enaba in the description down below. All right, so we are here for another day. We're going to be taking part in the American Muscle Shootout. Uh, and as voted by chat, we're going to be taking the Chevy Camaro 69. Starting off with Miguelo, moving on to Camino Vio de Montserrat. Sebring, and then finishing off with Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. Let's get going. All right, here we go. Oh my God, it's so warm in this room. As soon as I start streaming, it's just like, ah, oh, time to sweat buckets. It's been cold all today as well. Lovely bit of wheel spin to start off. Mm, 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 mm. Whoa, we're halfway there. Got a bit wide. Not too bad. Um, so to mod a PS2 is actually quite simple. What you need to do um, is buy a free boot car it's really weird so with a ps2 unless you have a card that has free boot like a memory card um you can't actually make a free boot card but once you have a free boot card you can use that to make more free boot cards um so you have to buy a memory card that has it pre-installed Um, and that's pretty much the simplest way to mod the PS2. It, 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 I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a system update configuration bug that allows you to exploit the system configuration, which basically means you can update the OS with custom firmware. Uh, yeah, so basically what you need to do is just buy a free muck boot card and then you can make more free muck boot cards but unless you already own a card like a memory card that has free muck boot you can't get one or just make one you need free muck boot to make a free muck boot card so um but i, I don't think a free muck boot card's more than 20 quid but uh what it basically does is just exploits the um I, I believe it exploits the save data thing. So you know when you get a new disc, uh, what it would normally do is if uh, Sony needed to push a patch to fix the PS2 or whatever, they would basically use those cards, the memory card, to store the updates. So if you plugged in the card, you plugged in a brand new PS5, PS2 disc, it would update the firmware. It, it was very basic, but it was like, if there was a bug that caused the system to just kill itself, they would have to fix it. And that's how they did it. But uh, obviously, if you unplug the memory card, put a different one in, that update is gone because it's saved to the memory card. It's not actually saved to the system's BIOS. No, because you haven't got free McBoot. You need free McBoot first, but there's no way you can put free McBoot on a memory card without a modded PS2 running free McBoot, which requires you to get free McBoot, which kind of defeats the purpose. So you have to buy a card that already has it on. You can obviously ask a friend who's already done it. I believe that it's still a thing that you can just distribute free McBoot. But yeah. You can't install games on a PS2. And I would never recommend installing games because the entire... Um, 
you technically can, but you can't. The USBs on the front are so slow on the PS2 that you can't store them via USB. The only thing really free McBoot is useful for is um, emulating older games, playing burnt slash counterfeit copies of games, ripped copies, um, and ripping discs. It's, it's very slim, so unless you have one of those three use cases, so if you're going to use it for emulation, um, what's it called, piracy, or um, actually ripping the discs to then use on a PC, there is no point in using free boot on your PS2. It's just a waste of money. Baby Toe, what's up? Welcome. How are you today? Hopefully you're having a good day. Welcome to the stream. If you don't mind me asking, how did you uh, find my content today? Hopefully you enjoy it here. It's a pretty interesting show. <laughs> I will take that money. Thank you very much. We're now level one. And we've got a 20% discount on ignition upgrades by Champion. Let's go. But again, at the end of the day, it's just wasting money. Really? To mod the PS2? I think console modding in general is fairly wasteful. I don't see the point in modding consoles unless you are like a proper retro gamer that just likes messing around with equipment and running your own stuff. But again, if you have a PC, I don't see why you just wouldn't use that. So unless you're literally looking Pleb. Oh, steering damage, great. Unless you're, like, someone who's into hobby stuff and is interested in modding a PS2, seeing how it works, getting software to run on a PS2, that kind of stuff, then you, yeah, maybe. That's your thing, but if you're just looking for emulating, just do it on a fucking PC. Do it on the hard way that you got. Yeah, I, I, I doubt that. I doubt that, Kodo, because 650 games like PS1 games would save onto a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Like PS1 games, although they were small, they weren't tiny. They were still about 800 megabytes to a gigabyte each. 650 games would not save onto anything a PS2 would understand. Because again, I think the uh, software limit of the PS2 was 128 gigabyte drives. Anything above that, it just could not handle. I think that's the same with uh, USB 2.0 as well. I think the most that that can handle is like four terabytes. And then after that, you've got to be running 3.0. Because of bandwidth restrictions. But then again, I'm not 100% I'm not sure. To be fair though, a lot of workplaces and shit like that will have like fairly basic radio stations that have songs that people know. It's fucking psychological shit. Gets you to stay there longer, buy more stuff, all that shit. Yeah, World War 2 flashbacks. Yeah, send me the video because I'm curious because I find it difficult to believe that that can happen on a PS2. 650 PlayStation games just... It seems like some scam or something. It really does not seem realistic. 
Either that or it's just a clickbait title to get people to click on it. It might be the fact that that mod can run that many games, but not at the same time. Or like have that many games installed at the same time. Uh, I will click on it in a second then. Do, do, do. Give me my reward. Bing bong, bing bong, bing bing bing, bing bong. Hmm. All right, not bad. We'll take my money and my damage cut as well. Uh, we've now got a twenty percent discount on fuel system upgrades by Edelbrook. Woo! Hey, welcome back, Epic. I obviously have. Because it looks like the PS1 original. It doesn't actually have a disk drive. I'm not even joking. That thing is smaller than the controller that comes with it. That disk drive is useless on that. It's, it's not an actual system that can run games. You have to find the games... Yeah. Like, even then, it doesn't have a disk drive, so it's kind of pointless. You're probably better off trying to find an original PS1 and just running the game straight from that. Do it. But again, I would recommend a PC, because again, if a PC dies, you can just take the hard drive and just carry on playing your games as normal. That's why I love... That's the one thing I love about PC gaming is the versatility of it. The fact that if your any hardware dies, you can just replace it and you don't have to worry about corrupting save data. Unless your hard drive dies. But chances of that happening in a PC is a lot lower than a 360 dying or something like that. Like this 360, every single time I turn it on, I'm like, am I going to see a red light ring of death? Is it going to tell me that I can't be bothered today and that I'm going on strike? Clearly not, but I'm waiting for that day still. You got to be doing and the music in our house. A sex shop. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, again... If you're looking for emulation, like obviously buying it off of playing it off of PS1 is not emulation, that's just native. Uh, playing it off of PS2 actually is also native playing PS1 games because that's native hardware. It's got a PS1 chip in it. Uh, the same can't be said about the 360 that doesn't have a Xbox One chip in it. Xbox Original, sorry. Yeah, that's how it's pronounced, but I just say CEX because otherwise people are like, oh, why have you got a sex shop that sells games? Like, everyone just gets confused. Especially the Americans that watch this, which is about 50% of people. Do, do, do. Exactly. See? Point proven. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I really want to get a Steam Deck. I want to get a Steam Deck with um, a 512 gigabyte SD card. Um, I don't need the massive uh, internal drive. It doesn't bother me. But I want to put some of my favorite PSP games on there. So like Gran Turismo, Ridge Racer, stuff like that. I want to try and get a <laughs> phone lines be like, welcome to sex. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to get some emulation stuff for PSP. 
PS2 emulation isn't quite there on the Steam Deck yet. It's not. PS2 emulation is actually quite difficult to do for certain titles still. Uh, Gran Turismo 4. Fucking poor lake. Um... But yeah, just some old PSP games, some PC games that are old, because they'll run like a charm on the Steam Deck. You know. I would love a Steam Deck. If anyone wants to buy me a Steam Deck or give me a Steam Deck, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, let's go. I would love PlayStation to make a slim console, but I at the same time... With how big a slim version of that is going to be, it's still going to be the size of what the old PS4 Pro was. It's not going to be a substantial slimming. It's still going to be quite a chunky system. But yeah, at the moment, the Steam Deck is like the best looking system for me at the moment. I really want to buy one. Just plug it into my PC, transfer over some games. Can you do a Scottish impression? You wee bastard. <laughs> I don't, I'm not very good. I am part Scottish, I'll be honest, but I'm not very good in touch with my Scottish side. <laughs> I try and think mathematically how much Scottish am I? 12%? I'm at 12 or 25. I think it's 25. No. 25. 12? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's. Taking too much from my brain to think. Uh, Wicked J, if you don't mind me asking, uh, how did you find my channel today, by the way? Because I see you are a first time chatter. Let's do Let's Plays like playing Gran Turismo 6 on PS3 on Twitch. No, because I've already done it on PlayStation like two years ago on YouTube. I don't see the point in doing it again. If you want, just watch my YouTube one. That was still probably one of my favorite playthroughs. So, yeah, go watch that instead. If you're looking for Gran Turismo, because the chances of me playing Gran Turismo again, very slim. Until long way in the future. Ooh, I bought my shoes and I'm ready for the weekend. Yeah, so by all means, if you want to watch Gran Turismo 6, I've got a YouTube playlist. If you want to watch half of Gran Turismo 5, I've got another YouTube playlist of that. But yeah, the only things that we're going to be like properly playing through on Twitch is Forza at the moment. Forza Motorsport 3 is the game. And until I finish this and the rest of the Forza games, I'm not playing through anything else. The rest of them are just me playing some stuff, so. Because I've got a project to complete all the Forza games, and I am not putting away... I'm, I'm not putting it on the sidelines like I did before. I actually want to get it done. <laughs> Cotto, thank you very much. 54 penis pennies. Cheers. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Thank you very much for the fiver. <laughs> A 20% discount on differential upgrades. Let's go. Uh.
Uh, oh yeah, Kodo, you did a couple of donations the other day, didn't you? Nice, I'll take that. All left. So it's here, uh, Salika versus Sylvia. We're going to be taking the Sylvia. At 338 performance index, which is pretty good. Starting off with Silverstone, moving on to Sebring, Maple Valley, and then Circuit de Catalunya. Let's go. All right, here we go. Might need the achievements as I'm going for the achievements in all the Saints Row games, one to four, then we'll buy new Saints Row. Ah, that's fair enough. I'm not going to lie. I didn't like the Saints Row series. It was a clunky game. Granted, I only played two, but four wasn't too much better when I tried that. So, I, I'm not buying the new Saints Row. I know Sinsu has said, Oh, you should get the new Saints Row. It's going to be awesome. Nah. I really couldn't get along with it. It wasn't my cup of tea. Sure, maybe the new one might be better than all of the old ones combined. But the old ones weren't great. So, I doubt I'm going to get it. Bop. Yeah. Well, like, I played two as well. Everyone was like, two's a pretty good one. No, it fucking wasn't. Apologies, anyone who's watching this on YouTube. Uh, you've just had the biggest fucking stutter in, in the world. Anyone watching on Twitch, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. If you had a stutter as well. I apologize, but there's nothing I can do about that. I think that's the only time that my videos have actually stuttered, like, substantially. Out of all the videos I've recorded so far for this Falls series on PC. Oh, yeah. This Falls series is the only series, like, most of 1, 2, and 3 only series that I've actually recorded on PC. The rest of them have all been recorded either straight onto a USB stick on an Xbox One or through a capture card directly to this capture card here. Not actually to a PC, so that's pretty cool, actually, to think about. One and two are probably my best. Three is AIDS, four is AIDS. Yeah, so there's no chance in hell if I think 2 is really bad, and I couldn't get along with it, 2 is like an old school looking GTA. It looks like GTA San Andreas. It's not a great looking game. Granted it was made for the 360, so I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, but still, it looks horrible. I just couldn't get along with it. I mean, if you think the new one looks meta, why are you buying it? <laughs> I'm sort of waiting for Saints Row to come onto something like Humble Bundle, where I can just buy it for like two quid. Games like that that I'm not sure about, I will get cheaper. And then if I enjoy it, I'll buy it on another platform to support them. But that very rarely happens for games I get fairly cheap. Yeah, exactly. Like... Reviews, here's the thing, right? I really, yeah, achievements is fair enough, but you can get achievements from better games than Saints Row. There are better games out there that are more enjoyable that you can get achievements from. Need for Speed uh, 2015, for example, is a good game to get achievements from. 100% that. Uh, that's a fairly simple one to get as well. I think for me it took 12, 15 hours. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit was about 24 hours, maybe 28. But that requires a multiplayer friend, but I already own it, so... Um, yeah, there's quite a few good games. Burnout Paradise. That's extremely difficult though because there's one achievement that's a bitch but the thing is with PlayStation when you're trying to get trophies you're trying to hunt for those platinum trophies so 
you can't get that without getting the really difficult trophies. Whereas on Xbox, you can technically just give up on a game. Because once you, um... Peppa Pig and Paw Patrol are better games then. Probably, yeah. I'll be honest. Yeah, because Xbox, you can just give up halfway through, get like 950 game score out of 1,000. That's still pretty good, and you don't have to do the achievement that takes 7 hours to complete. You know. 10% discount on chassis reinforcement and roll cake. Yeah, exactly. And then you got PC, which gives you absolutely zero incentive whatsoever to get achievements. Let's be honest, what is the point in achievements on Steam? Absolutely nothing, it's just a little badge. What's the point in getting achievements on Epic Games? Any of those, the pointless. The only one that I physically think makes sense, right? And everyone's gonna hate me for saying this. Origin is the best platform to get achievements on because you get points for it. And you can score points. It's exactly the same as the Xbox's gamer score system. And I think some of the point values are actually exactly the same for, like, the games that are on Origin that are also on Thingy. I think it's exactly the same, so... Origin is probably the best to get achievements for on PC. Because you get a score. But then again, PC has the added bonus of the games just looking better and performing better. But then console has the bonus of just, you don't have to do anything. You just buy the game, download it, run it, and it works. So that's also a bonus for, um, console. There's all sorts of positives and negatives and shit like that. We're not even going to discuss Nintendo. Nintendo is so anti-consumer, we're not even going to give them the recognition. Fuck Nintendo. Honestly, hate Nintendo as a company. They're horrible. If I was ever approached by Nintendo and was told, Oh, we'd like to sponsor you for this game that's on the Switch. Even if it was WRC for the Switch, I would still turn them down because it's Nintendo. Fuck them. I would go to the WRC developers and say, look, can I get it for Steam instead? Because I, I ain't supporting Nintendo at all. And if they said no, I'd say fine. <laughs> Hate Nintendo as a company. Like, why on earth would you try to hide as much... I mean, the amount of fan interactions that Nintendo has sent cease and desists over is unreal. I mean, there are companies, right? What was it? The Etika situation? There was a company that was making custom Joy-Con shells. Um, sort of raise money for charity. And they sent cease and desists because they didn't like the idea of charity. I don't think that was the exact reason, but I don't care. That's what I want to believe it as. Like, a lot of companies, even if their intellectual property is at risk, like, if someone was selling something for a profit, yeah, they might turn an eye. But, well, they might look and be like, hmm, I need to send a cease and desist. That's fair enough. But these guys were doing it for charity. And Nintendo... Like, most companies would turn a blind eye to stuff that was for charity, because it's negative PR for them if they take it down, first of all. And second of all, what's... What, Project Cars 1? September 21 is being de delisted. Cheers for letting me know. I will be buying it on Steam now. <laughs> Thank you, Jacob. Both one and two. No way. Oh, that's that's changed the tables. Oh, how to turn tables. 
Interesting. All right, so between this clip and the last clip, I did actually get the Ford GT, but I accidentally stopped recording because I had to check up something on my PC. I completely forgot. Um, but yeah, we're carrying on now. I still can't believe they're delisting Project Cars 2 before Project Cars 1. That sucks. October the 2nd is when they're delisting Project Cars 1, but I believe I'm just going to buy it. Even if I never play it, at least I have it in my collection. I will have to look and see what the price is on Steam before it gets delisted, because I know a lot of game developers, before a game delists, they normally try and just get as many copies out there as possible. The more copies, the more money. If they can sell it for as cheap as possible and just get that extra bit of cash, they'll do it. When did Project Cars 2 even come out? It was like 2017, wasn't it? Or 2018? I want to say 17. Which is not long enough for a video game to be out nowadays. Five years. It really surprises me that the licenses weren't extended longer for Project Cars 2 than Project Cars 1. Especially with how successful Project Cars 2 was compared to 1. You would have thought they would have kept that on for a bit longer. Antidote. There's no antidote. Through my whole existence, got me twisting, can't resist it. Something slipped in on my switches, they can break and they can feel it. Pressure is riding me high. I have to grab a drink after this race. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. Do you know what the sad thing is? Once this video goes live, Project Cars will probably have been delisted already. But I, th I will give props to EA, a company who completely fucked us over with the Need for Speed franchise when they delisted everything. I will give them props that they have given us ample warning this time. I think EA got so much backlash when they delisted Need for Speed that they just couldn't do that again without warning. Honestly, Need for Speed's warning was like a night. They they literally said like at midnight, oh yeah, by the way, in a bit we'll be delisting them. And within a couple of hours they were gone. Every single Need for Speed game. Rushing through my whole existence, got me twisting, can't resist it, some things flipping on my switches. Like, I understand expiring licenses is a thing, but... Come on. EA's supposed to know when those licenses expire, they should know when to notify us and give us, like, a month's notice. 
Oh, look, this one's going to expire at this time. Right, a month before that, we'll tell everyone we're delisting. For example. Not bad, though. 7,700. I'll take it. Thank you very much. All right, here we go. I had a little bit of a bug going on with my PC then. It wouldn't uh, unmute my game audio. So it just stayed muted. Very strange. There's so much news coming out in the gaming industry. Just just tonight, we've had Project Cars news about Project Cars being delisted from stores. We've got news about Sony having a class action lawsuit against them for their 30% cut, which, fair enough. I mean, Microsoft has finally brought theirs down to 12%, but they did it before Google. Actually, did Microsoft do it or was it Google that did it? before they got the lawsuit. I think Microsoft did it before they got a lawsuit, just to avoid hassle. But yeah, Google had the lawsuit for their 30% thing, so they went down to 12% unless you're earning over a million, which, I mean, it's fair enough. Apple had to do the same thing. I don't... Here's the thing. So, Apple is a company that is a brand. You are paying for the name. So, I understand why their tax is higher and why people still bought the devices because they were buying a brand. At that point, I don't think consumers, after buying an iPhone, have the right to complain about prices on the store. End of discussion. Like, anyone who buys an iPhone deserves to get ripped off. No, okay, that's a bit harsh. Anyone who buys an iPhone and pays that much of a premium to own that name shouldn't be complaining about having to pay a premium to download stuff off the Apple Store. Because you deliberately bought into a name at the end of the day. Like, you, you have no right in complaining about it. And it's similar to anyone who buys a Samsung flagship. Obviously, for me, I've bought a cheaper Samsung that does the job. It's like 90% what the iPhone offers anyways, in terms of performance. It's just not flagship. It's not the best of the best. But I paid a decent amount for my phone. Not substantial that I'm being ripped off. I can have a say in it. Anyone who buys a flagship Samsung Fold or whatever and spends two grand on their phone, they, they don't deserve a say in the store matters anyways. Anyone else buys a Windows phone? I don't even know if they still exist. Or a cheaper Android? Yeah, you can, you can have a say in the discussion because it's affecting you. But anyone who's got the money to throw away at an expensive brand, so pretty much Samsung flagships or Apple users, don't get a say. Because they've, they've thrown away money just by buying the brand. So I don't think it matters if they throw away more money. And if they're that worried about Apple's tax, don't buy an Apple. You've already spent, like, three quarters of that iPhone price is profit just because of the fact you're paying for that brand. So you could quite easily stop complaining. <laughs> That's why I found it really weird that people were all complaining about Apple first before Google and all that. It really confused me.
finally, we finished the first episode of recording, and we're two hours into the stream. I've just been ranting so much. <laughs> Off camera. Ah, we should uh, crack on. I want this done by five hours. Like, done, thumbnails, everything. Not bad. 174 grand total. Nice. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.